Alright folks, how's it going? The name's Deffy and welcome to another episode of my solo D&D actual play series, Tales of Fool's Gold. In the last episode, we created a party to go and venture into the Dolphin Monster Lair. A Mark of Warding Dwarf Monk, a shifted Divine Soul Sorcerer, and a tribal warrior they recruited at a local mercenary hall. Their objective? To go in and eviscerate as many dolphins as possible and find some treasure. I have made some mistakes this episode, but I have done some text boxes to describe what I've done and how I've rectified it. There will be some minor ones, but I have corrected myself in later recordings. Hope you enjoy. Right, okay, so we're on Donjon. Basically, the 5e random dungeon generator. So I'm going to be using this for the monster layers just to quickly come up with a dungeon. Um, TSAT random dungeon generator has a bunch of tables to roll on with different outcomes and stuff. And I want to save them for the dungeons to make it feel more special, you know, as we go through one room at a time. At least with this, we know the surprise because once we click on random dungeon and then we go down to construct dungeon, it will, these little rooms and different icons, it'll give us like... It'll basically tell us what's happening in that room where the other one we won't know as we're going through so i think that'd be so cool so here's what i'm gonna do so we're gonna go dungeon level one we're gonna go party size two the reason why is because it's not gonna take our tribal warrior uh recruitment uh, militia so yeah and we're gonna go to motif and we're gonna go to aqua uh, aquatic because you don't want coastal makes sense and we're gonna go around the dungeon Okay, so it's given us this. Alright, so tiny, dungeon layer hexagonal, tiling, scatter, small, polymorph rooms, death traps. <laughs> yeah, it's given us whatever. Alright, so once we click on construct, it's mapping it out and then the objective thing. So yeah, so this is pretty much what it's going to look like. So we have ones and ones and stuff. So we have doors. Uh, I guess the ones with the things are trapped. Uh huh. So we got a secret door. So I guess we can come up with an entrance. I want to say maybe... Ah, E. That's the entrance right there, I think. So yeah, so if you scroll down, like obviously we've got like a history, we've got size, we've got the walls. Uh, coral, 10 DC to climb, so that'll be an athletics check. Muck, difficult terrain, that's amazing because basically what I was thinking was... Oh, it's completely underwater. Hmm, okay. I'm probably not going to class it as completely underwater because we haven't really got anything... Uh, to combat this, but basically what I was thinking was, I was thinking that the entire dungeon is going to be um, half full of water. So basically, I'm thinking maybe like waist length, waist height, sorry, or something. But basically, every square, which would, which would take 5 feet to move. So for example, our dwarf has 25 feet of movement, so we can like move, you know, 5 squares, because each square is 5. So like 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. But I might make it ha um, half movement, so every square is 10 tiles. So instead of, you know, the full three tiles for a 30 feet movement, it'll be two. So I might do that instead. Uh, also, we've got corridor features as well. Knocking fills the corridor, so for spaces. But I think, I think this will be our entrance. This looks like a good place for an entrance, maybe. And also down here as well, we have wonder monsters. So, for example, if we go into here, we're going to be facing a Sarajan. Hard, 100 experience. So, yeah, so one. And then we got something in six. So, for example, we could face two Sarajans here. But what we're going to do is, because this is a monster layer of the dolphin, we're going to replace all these enemies with dolphins. So, here we could face one dungeon, one dolphin. And then where it says four, Bollywood and Giant Frog. So, it'll be like one and four if I can find it. Yeah, here, this room, there'll be two dolphins, basically it'll all be dolphins, it's a dolphins monster layer at the end of the day. And then here we have like, room one, which I can only imagine being here, yeah, I think one, it's like room one or something. Uh, northern entry, secret door to unlock, to break, conceal, pioneer area slime, leads to room two. Ah, uh, I guess these are rooms there. Ah, right, okay, I get it, I get it. So these are rooms then. So we've got secret room, ah, yeah, secret room one. Secret door, civil stock. Area slime leads to room two. Uh-huh. 
And then a tile labyrinth covers the floor. See, I've never really used this before. I'm just having a quick look. Reign of Fear. It's just a frightened, simple store. Draw 16 silver pieces. Huh, interesting. Look at them. That's pretty cool, then. Yeah, alright then. We can use this for, like, the treasure and stuff, then. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this image, I'm going to put it into Paint 3D, and what I'm going to do is I might take this bit and then keep making it its own, like, separate table so we can, like, have a look at it whilst we're in Paint 3D. Right? Okay, okay, here we go. Okay, so you may notice something that this is not the correct map from a few seconds ago, or from what I showed on Donjon. The uh, reason why is because I'm recording this this section at least, um, a little later on in the first section, and my stupid ass forgot to type down, write down copy or whatever the uh, the special rules and loot drops for this particular dungeon, well, for that particular dungeon, but um, I've got a, I've got a PDF this time to showcase what's happening. Right, so we have up, down, Secret doors, trap doors, locked doors, of course, sideways. So, looking at the general statistics here. So, floor is sand, so it means we can move our full moving rate. This is completely underwater, um, special condition. We're going to completely ignore that because we don't have any capabilities of doing anything underwater. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to class this as weight height, waist height, right? And I'm going to treat it as it's difficult terrain. I'll talk about that in a second. Um, also, we have a temperature as well. So we could do a DC 10 constitution save throw each hour or gain one level of exhaustion. I'm going to do that actually. Okay, so yeah, so I'm going to do that um, because that will make things a little interesting. And here's the big one I was just debating um, illumination. It's dark. So individual creatures may carry lights. Now, if we go back to the. Okay, so we go back to here. So, when it comes to darkness, or darkness in general, basically that means if a creature does not have something called, or ability called uh, dark vision, or some kind of um, sight, like blind sight here, for example, it means they cannot see. So that means all attacks within five feet. So for example, we have a creature here and a warrior here. It's completely darkness. The warrior can't see and tries attacking, all attack rolls will be with a disadvantage. And obviously, they can't do any ranged attacks or magic that requires line of sight. But if the creature has blind sight or some kind of dark vision or something, then they can attack like normal. Um, I believe they can attack through dark vision uh, with advantage, but I don't know about that. Um, also, when it says about light, there is a couple of things we can do. We can use torches. And we can use um, spells such as the Light's Cantrip. So that's what I'm going to be doing. Um, so yeah, I think it's time to actually get started now. So we need to determine which direction we're going to come into. Now, the actual stairs down and the stairs up, um, I could roll another dungeon per se. But to be honest, it's just going to be a one floor tile. So imagine this here and this here are just walls. So... Let's get started then. Right, so let's roll a d4 to determine where we're going to start. One. Okay, so we're going to start from up here with things. We're going to start from one, two, three, four. In fact, let's just roll something. Let me just bring this a little bit forward. Perfect. That'll do. Yeah, basically, uh, one of the good things about Paint 3D is you can allocate things to a 3D view. Like that. If I would scroll out. So yeah, you can allocate things like 3D with different layers so I don't have to get rid of the um, get rid of the map at the back with all the tiles. It's amazing. Okay then, right, so let's do this then. So we're going to start at level 3. Sorry, level 3. We're going to start at this entrance here. Right, so it's because it's off 33 here. Okay, so now we need to determine our order. And the way we're going to do this is, well, free choice really. So our tribal warrior has an AC of 12. And Doran, our monk, has an AC of 10. And, of course, 
Flora has an AC of 14, but she's more of a caster than she is a melee. So I think what I'm going to do is we're going to pot a tribal warrior. I think our monks can be like, right, tribal warrior, you go first. In their respective squares. Oh, one deer. There we go. So it's going to be moved within our respective squares. Now, another thing we're going to do as well is uh, I'm going to get my pencil here because what we're going to do is we're going to roll initiative. So the way I'm going to do this, which will just be a lot easier for everybody, including myself, is um, the way it would work is normally is basically with you and your group, you can move three times. There's no time limit or whatever, and you can all move at the same time. And then when you get into battle, you roll initiative to determine who's going to act first in the order. But what we're going to do is we're going to do initiation order for myself, just because it's just a little easier doing it that way. So let's have a look. So we're going to roll the tribal first. So the tribal has a dex of plus zero. Basically, to roll initiative, it's, um, it's a d20 plus your initiative. Um, there's also a other formula to, to do a... 3.17 or something, but I'm just going to roll initiative as normal. So it's going to be d20 plus dex. So that is 0. Uh, sorry, that's 8, I think. Is it 8? Uh, let's double check. 8. Yeah, I've got a lot of windows open, so I'm just going to write an 8. Determine that. Okay. Doran. It's plus 1, so let's do that then. So D20 plus 1, 15. Okay, so it looks like he's going to be moving first. So we'll just write 15. Yes, we know. And then we'll do the same for Flora. So there is a D20 plus 6. I know Flora got the good stats here. <laughs> D20 plus 3, 16. Okay, so. That could be quite useful if that's the case. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this. So let's go. Flora. Followed by. Doran. Followed by. T. Alright, so that's the initiation order, and then I'll do the enemies at the side, then we can determine from there and then. Right. Okay, dokie then. Right, so. Now, there's the other thing I need to explain about as well. So, um, of course, there's going to be passing turns, and here's what's going to happen. I've been having a little bit to think about this. So, with each room, there is going to be a an encounter, a forced encounter, that we can do. But what I'm going to do is I'm thinking, um, actually... Looking at the numbers. No. Okay, we don't need to do it. Well, no, actually, yeah, that's what we'll do. Um, what I'm going to do is, at the end of, of every... I'm going to say every two turns, we're going to do a wandering encounter check, which is going to be a extra fight that we're going to be doing in a corridor or another room or whatever, right? And that's going to be on a six. Now, regarding um, Dungeon Dragons 5th Edition, we have access to short rests and long rests. So what? So short rest is basically a one hour rest where you have the choice to expend hit dice to regain hit points, right? And the way that works is basically the DX is your class die and the total is based on the levels of that class. Um, if you are a multi-class, so let's say you were Monk Sorcerer, you would have access to, let's say you were a level 3 Monk and level 5 Sorcerer, 
you would have eight hit die altogether because that's your character level, but you would only have three d8s and only five d6s. Um, so, and also, um, you can do that as many times in a day if you wish, or how your body or table runs it. But the long rest is a full eight hour rest, and you get your spell slots back as well as other abilities as well. But there's also other abilities that you can recover through short rests as well. But for now, we only got access to long rests to replenish anything in terms of the spells. Um, Doran's got some spells as well, but I'm going to shift them as time goes. So, the way I'm going to work it is the, the free rests, because long rests, all, sorry, also long rests replenish your health back to full. And you get your hit dies back. I've got to mention that. So the way we're going to do it is this, right? Okay. So regarding the rest of chosen. So what will happen is on turn five, they're going to have the ability to do a short rest, and on turn ten, they will be able to do a long rest. So basically, every five turns, they can do a short rest of so five, fifteen, uh, twenty-five, but on turns ten, twenty, thirteen, so on, they can do a long rest. I think. Just at this level, but I'll be changing those um, as we gain more levels. Now, here's the thing. With long rests as well, I'm going to class that as a day. So our higher counter will go down. Right now we're on 5. And we only got 9 rations. So we can explore a little bit, but not much. Because we're going to have to... We're going to have to leave again. Yeah, we're going to have to leave and head back to civilization. But we do have some access to get some treasures from items. Okay, without further ado, let's get started then. So, first in the order is going to be Flora. So Flora can move 30 feet. So, and this room here is a lot if I remember correctly. So, let's go one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to stop there. And then next is Doran, who can only move five spaces because he has 25 but, uh, feet of health, health, a speed. So that's going to be one, two, three, four, five. And he's outside the door. Now, if we go to the PDF, which I'll bring up. No. If we move up, that's a door. So it's not locked. So I think what we want to do is... Um, yeah, I'm just going to say he opens the door. I'm just going to say he opens the door. So, the door swings open. So, I think what we'll do is we will do a line down that way to show that it's been opened. So, the door's open. So, now, we look at our PDF, free and a free. So, we go to room three, I believe. Okay, so in room 3, we have an unlocked stone doll door. Unlock. Okay. At room 3, we have unlocked stone door, but we also have a fight here as well. So, we also have a fight as well. So, this is against a dolphin. Now, even though the wandering monster says bullywog and sergeants and all that, remember this is a monster layer. And this is going to be a dolphin monster layer. So, we're facing up against a dolphin. Okay, so we've opened the door, and there's a dolphin in this room. The question is, is the dolphin surprised? And for that, we need to roll a d20, a Q and A, yes or no. So 1 to 9 is a no, 11 to 20 is a yes. No, it's not surprised. Are we surprised? No, perfect. Okay, awesome. So, we've got a 1, 2, 3, so... Okay, so now we need to decide which side does the dolphin start. So from here, one, two, three, four, we're going to decide where the dolphin is starting. So that's really four, three. So it's going to start in this corner here. Okay, so now we're going to roll initiation for the dolphin. So that's a d20 plus one. 20. So it starts first. Okay, but because it's not surprised, it needs to think. The dolphin is going to start Okay, so let's go Okay, 
Okay, so it's roll of 20. So, put the dolphin here. When we defeat it, I'll scribble it out. This is basically going to be my <laughs> initiation copy board or whatever. Okay, but technically, it's still on this turn. So, because we're not surprised, Doran is going to shout to the tribal warrior. We have a fight. Hurry to the front line. Tribal warrior can move 30 feet. So he's going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And that's just in combat. So now we go back to the top of the board. So even though now this would have been turn 2, now that we're in combat, the actual turns are going to, going to start. So depending, we might be able to get a rest after this. We'll see. Yeah, I'm just looking at marking two ones just to say what turn it is. Okay, so the dolphin heard a splish splashing of the corridor. Gets ready for battle. And within a split second, as soon as the door opens and the tribal warrior comes charging through, he's gonna make an attack. So we have the access to the slam attack. Dolphin moves at least 30 feet straight forward, but unfortunately I'm gonna say no because this door is covering us. But the dolphin's gonna move. 5, 10, is going to gauge the Tribal Warrior. So we'll go over to the actions. Okay, so we came over to the actions, and it's going to do a slam attack. So we need to do a D20 plus 4. 11. Which is a miss, if I'm not mistaken. It is. Perfect. And by the way, um... I'm just going to take the 11 hit points. Uh, you're supposed to roll what hit points this guy gets, so 2d8 plus 2, but I'm going to keep it as an average of 11. But 11 misses. So the Tribal Warrior hears the splashing, this torrent of water splashing all over the place, and the Dolphin tried to slam into him. But the Tribal Warrior, being ready because of Doran's instruction that there is somebody in here, managed to move the attack. Perfect. Okay, so next turn is Flora. So, Flora, I'm going to say, okay, so Flora, being a sorcerer, as well as an achieved, uh, chief archer, with a, like, crossbow. Okay, with Flora just coming in into the dungeon, I don't think she wants to expend any ammunition or anything, so I think she's going to cast Way of Frost. So Ray of Frost is a d20 plus 4 because it needs an attack roll. Um, I'm going to have to do this if I'm going to do any of the spells, I think. Okay, so Ray of Frost uh, makes a ranged spell attack of target on a hit. It takes 1d8 cold damage as bees is reduced by 10 feet until the start of your next turn. And so, let's roll a d20 plus 4 since that's our attack bonus. Attack bonus. 15 is a hit. Okay, so 15 is a hit. But to let you know, I'm going to start rolling HP on the next couple of dun uh, dolphins to come. So, let's roll a 1d8, dealing 7 points of cold damage as a ray of blue frost emanates from Flora's hand straight to the dolphin. Perfect. Okay, so this dolphin's now on 3 HP. And I think to finish off a turn, she's just going to stay where she is. Okay, Doran. Doran seeing the dolphin extremely hurt. He's going to move five, ten feet here. And he's going to try and attack with a sickle. Now, the sickle weapon is a 1d4 piercing weapon. I've not filled it out. I'll fill it out later or so. But, um, yeah, with a sickle, it's a 1d4 weapon. Okay, then, right, so Doran, I just have to go have a look at the rules for Monk. So, here's the thing, um, the monks have an ability where they can make, or they have proficiency with any simple weapons that doesn't have the heavy or special properties into a monk weapon, meaning that the sickle here, which normally would use our strength modifier, could use a dex instead, and that's what we're going to do. So we're going to make a dex attack with sickle, um, so it's going to be a d20 plus 1, so, oh sorry, no, it's proficient, so it's going to be a... That's right, it's got, it's got proficiency in uh, simple weapons. So, 
It's alright. Efficiency and simple weapons. Yep. Efficiency and simple weapons. As well as short swords, battle axes, hand axes, like, yeah, I've got to remember that. But, um, yeah, so basically it's going to be a plus three. Yeah, it's going to be a plus three to hit, but the damage is going to be 1d4 slash and plus one. So, let's, uh, let's do that quickly. So it's going to be plus three. Seven misses. Yeah, seven misses because the dolphin's AC is a 12. It's a complete swipe. So Doran comes marching forward. He tries coming down and he starts to swing with his sickle. However, he misses. But, but he can also make a bonus action unarmed strike, which is a 1d4 straight, I believe. So let's try that. Let's roll d20. Let's roll d20 plus dex, because you can do it with martial arts. Then misses as well. It just completely swings past. You know, I just went off to take a break, and um, I'd be forgetting my own rules. I've got this entire place is half movement and <laughs> difficult terrain. And so to still, you know, uh, difficult terrain the way it is is that every square takes five foot speed, right? But the the cost for each square is doubled when it's direct when it's a uh, difficult terrain. So instead of five, it's ten. Uh, ten, sorry. Right, okay then. So we have the next turn. The tribal warrior is going next. Okay, so the tribal warrior, barely managing to avoid the dolphin's powerful attack, decides to retaliate with a nice little spear attack with two hands. So if he hits, he's doing one d8 plus one damage. So it's a plus three to attack. So. Let's get our dice roller up, and let's go d20 plus 3, 20, nice. Not a crit, but 20, which definitely hits. So that's 1d8 plus 1, dealing 3 damage, just enough, as he plunges his spear right into the side of the dolphin. The dolphin makes a loud sound of intense pain, and the dolphin lies at his side. Nice. Okay then, and with that, we can move on. So, now that we dealt with the first battle, we didn't really use up any resources, it's pretty nice. So now we're back to movement. So, I'm going to class that battle. Every battle, I'm going to class as a turn. So that's three turns. So that's three full turns in the dungeon. Yeah, because um, a full turn consists of, uh, I believe, like a minute, I think it is. Every minute is a turn. But still, I'm going to just count each battle as a turn in the dungeon. Okay, so now we're back at the top again. Okay, we're back to the top of the round. So Flora is going to move. We can only move three spaces because it's 30 feet. And it's difficult terrain, so that's going to be one, two, three, stopping at the door. Now, we have a little bit of a choice here. We can either move to the left, or we can move to the right. So, if we go back to our PDF. And have a look at the key features. This is an archway. So, we can pass through. So, we can pass through this if we want to. But the problem is, this door is locked. So, to help us, what we're going to do is we're going to roll D2. And it's going to determine which way we're going to go. So, so we're going to head to the right now. So the party has a look at each other. They have to discuss where they're going to move. And Doran, who's pretty much the party leader, decides we're going to move to the left as there's an open archway. So with that, Doran's going to move 5, 10. Because he can only move 20 feet. Oh no, I'm gonna say he can no, I'm gonna say the party can dash actually. I forgot the dash action was something. So the dash action is that you can double your movement for one turn. And you know, that's what he's gonna do. Yeah, that's that's what that's what whoop, shit. That's what the party's gonna do. They're gonna dash. Okay, so it's 10, 20, 30, 40. That's 50 feet because it's double movement. So 25 doubled is 50. I think 
the tribal warriors can do that as well. So it's going to be 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. In their turn. Actually, I'm just going to say for sake of ease, Barty, sorry, uh, just here, right? Yep, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. So she's not that far behind. And then there we go, that'll be the end of the turn. So now we're at turn four. And now what we're going to do is, we're going to do B6, and it's going to determine if there's a wandering monster or not. On a six, there is. There is a monster monster. Okay, awesome. Well, not really. <laughs> so, as we know, it's just going to be another... As we know, it's just going to be another dolphin. So now we need to determine where it's going to come from. Is it going to come from the left? Behind? Or to here? So we're going to go one, two, three, in a clockwork direction. D3, one. So it's coming from the left hand side. Now, the question is, is the party surprised by this? 10 is a re-roll? No, they're not surprised. They're not surprised as I'm just gonna say that Flora has a passive perception of 12. And a dolphin tried to hide, but had a very low stealth score, let's, let's put it that way. I'm not going to go into the nitty gritty of every mechanic. So, door is closed, but after hearing the scream of its mate, comes forward, smashes through the door, and is here. And because the party is not surprised, it's not going to, they're ready for the attack, so it's not going to get a surprise round. So, let's roll initiative for the Dolphin. Okay, D20 plus... 1. Okay, so it's at 14. So, in terms of initiation, so in terms of initiation, it's right here. Dolphin B. Perfect. Also as well, there is experience we can give out as well. But I'm going to be keeping... Actually, do you know what? I'm going to be keeping a kill counter actually. To determine how many experience. So, I'm just going to go EX... P... K... For experience kills. I'm just going to put one there. And we can determine this afterwards. Okay, so. Top of the round. So, Flora. Yep, top of the round. Okay. Right, so top of the round, Flora, hearing the dolphins splashing through. It's going to do a ray of frost. Yeah, it's going to do a ray of frost in an attempt to slow it down so she can regroup or buy the frontliners a little bit of a chance to set up the battle line. So we're going to go D20 plus 4. Critical 1 misses. Yep, Critical 1 misses and she decides to move two squares back so the dolphin doesn't reach in time okay Doran's next Doran hearing Flora screaming we got another one decides to rush back who's one two squares because he can only move 45 feet, or let's mean it's a little bigger so we can see him. I see the dolphin that is not in range to attack. Instead, what he's going to do is this. He was saving this for time. But he's going to cast Mage Armor on himself. Okay, so just a quick explanation of Mage Armor. Um, just to go over the dwarf as well, because I know some people are going to be asking about this or mentioning something. The mark of warding, um, as you can see, let's do it this way. All right, let's do it this way quickly. Okay, so just to clarify a couple of things, because I know some people are going to be asking. Um, so as you can see, 
We've got wards and seals. You can cast seal arm and mage armor spells with a straight. Starting at level 3, you can also cast arcane block. Once you cast any of these spells with straight, you can't cast that spell again until you finish a long rest. But it says you do not need material components from which you cast with a straight. Where if we go back to mage armor, it says material components. So we can just do it without it. So basically, this is going to increase the AC to 13 plus dex modifier, and it's going to last for 8 rounds. Okay, so now his new AC is 13 3 hours, so remember that. Because... Oh, actually no, if it's new, then that's... Oh, I made a mistake though, actually. Okay, so now his new AC is 14, because it's 13 plus 1. Now, I know some people are also going to be asking, uh, should that not be 13 because of his unarmored defense? Which unarmored defense is 10 plus your dex plus your wisdom, but because we've got a plus 1, that's 10 plus 1, which is 11, and then minus 1 from wisdom, which would be 11. However, mage armor is classed as an entirely different armor. So it's 14 AC for him. And I think from there, he's going to end his turn. Okay, so moving on to the Dolphin, because Dolphin's next at 14. Right, the Dolphin, seeing Doran come out of nowhere, is just going to charge right to him. It's going to move into a straight line, and it's going to attack with a slam attack. Alright, so Dolphin moves in, he's going to make a slam attack. So we want a D20 plus 4. 15 hits. As the dolphin moves at a very ferocious speed and slams his side of the body into the center mass of Doran. Dealing. Dealing four points of damage. As you hear a big wolf as he takes it. So that leaves him with so that leaves him. So that leaves him with four hit points. Yep, that leaves him with four hit points. Never attacking his down. And then for that, the dolphin's going to finish up. Okay, the tribal warrior hearing the commotion in the back room decides to turn back round. He moves 10, 20, 30, and decides to attack with a spear. However, however, he can only see the front part of the dolphin, just the snout, so the actual target area is very, very, uh, very small, because the majority of the body is hiding behind the, the corner. The problem with this, this is classed as half cover, so this means that the dolphin's AC is a little higher. And if I'm not mistaken, half cover is plus two, I think, I think it's plus two AC. Okay, let's have a quick look. It is plus two. All right, cool then. Okay, so we want to attack with a plus three, but what we're going to do is we're going to do a d20 plus three minus two for the... Okay, so we're going to do a d20 plus three, but we're going to add two AC to the dolphin, so let's have a look. A seven. Even with the half cover of the AC of the Dolphin being 12, or at 14 in this case, still a miss. And do you know what I forgot to do? Shit. And do you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to randomize the hit points. Well, to be honest with you, I mean, nobody hits anyway, so nobody took an attack against them, so I guess we can do it now. So it's 2d8 plus 2. So 2d8 plus 2. Got 9 hit points. Alright, so I'll write that down now. So 9 hit points. Okay, there we go. Perfect. Okay, top of the round. So Flora's up next. So Flora is, I think, she's just going to stand where she is, but noticing that her attacks are not going through, she arms her short bow? Yeah, I'm going to say she arms her light crossbow. So her, like crossbow, is a 1d, 
Yep, it's a plus 5 because of proficiency bonus plus dexterity, so it's d20 plus 5. 19 hits. Perfect. And she's dealing 1d8 plus 3 piercing damage. So, d8 plus 3. Dealing 9 damage. Oh, wow. Dealing 9 damage as she carefully and expertly aims her delight crossbow and hits as the crossbow. I can't believe this. I can't, I can't even make it that awesome because I can't believe she just rolled a fucking nine bang on. Holy shit. Basically, the crossbow bolt just skims right into the eye of the dolphin and just takes her in one. Holy spit. <laughs> oh my god, that's another dead dolphin. Another dead golf dolphin? <laughs> another dead dolphin. Holy spit. How the hell did she roll a nine? That's mad. That's completely, completely, completely mad. Alright, so that's another one for the kill. And then that's five. So, do we want to take a short rest? Do you know what? I'm going to say, yeah, we're going to take a short rest. Yeah, we're going to take a short rest. So, this means, so taking a short rest, they basically just stay in their position, just chilling for an hour, just talking. Actually, do you know what? Um, yeah, do you know what? Let's, uh, let's move. I think they'll be better into the corridor maybe, so yeah, so we're going to dash. So that's going to be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. That's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. And then that's going to be 5, 10, 15, 20. Sorry. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. And they can chill in the corridor then. Perfect. Okay, so with a short rest, Doran has the ability to regain some HP. So we're going to roll d d8 and determine how many hit points he gets back. So let's roll d d8. He gets one back. Ooh, that's kind of bad. Again, one hit point back. Giving him a grand total of five. He gets five hit points back. Okay. So, um, an hour passes. So we're at turn six. And we're back to the top. No. They come to a stone door. They come to a door that's locked, I believe, if we have a look at the PDF. Yep, by looking at the PDF. It's locked, I believe. Is it square? Yep, it's locked. Okay, so it's locked. So if we go down to room two, this is the next room. We have East Entry Two. Okay, I misread this. I completely misread this. This is room 33. It's not room three and a wandering monster. No, this is room 33. The, wonder, the, the rooms tell you if there's a wandering monster and if there's going to be a fight in the room. <laughs> I'm a donkey. Hey, I'm learning this again. going. Like I said, I've not done any of this in practice. I'm just trying to own now. Okay, alright, so scratch that. But hey, we got a couple of kills on the board. Let's, you know, do a little bit of training to show you how it's going to go. Let's do this properly then, right? Okay, so room 33. North entrance. Okay, so Stong, Stock Door, DC 15 break, 28 points. Okay. So, what we're going to do is, we're going to do this. So 15 AC to break down. So, let's get attacking. So I'm going to say that Tribal Warrior and Doran are going to make an attack. I think we're going to use the highest modifier, I think. Um, yeah, I'm going to say we're going to take the highest modifier. Which in this case is going to be... I don't know, is it going to be a Tribal Warrior? At a plus one. Doran's a... There's a plus three, this is a plus three as well. Okay, I'm gonna say that Laura's gonna skip a turn, and Doran and the Tribal Warrior's gonna bring it down. So, here's what we're gonna do. What we're gonna do is we're gonna do this. Doran's gonna do a strength check, see if you try and break the door down using strength, but he's gonna do it with advances because the Tribal Warrior's gonna help. So, let's make that check now then. So let's go a d20 
plus. Yeah, we're going to use the Tribal Warrior's um, stats, I think. So that's going to be a plus one with advantage, meaning we roll twice, take the higher. So that's 17 and d20 plus one. Six, but 17. If we go to the PDF. 17 beats the uh, beats the check. Now it says 20 HP, it says DC 15 to break, 20 HP points if we're attacking it. But I'm going to say using strength, we got it open and that's exactly what we did. Just to save a bit of time. Okay, and with that, that's another turn down. That's another turn down. And basically, like I said, every five turns, I think I said every five turns, right? Yeah, every five turns, we'll do a Wandering Monster. Did I say for four turns? Okay, yeah. I think with every four turns, as I said, we're going to uh, do a Wandering Monster check. So two more turns or one more turn, we do it. But basically, I'm going to say to spend the entire turn doing that. Okay, so this room is going to lead to room 24. So check in the PDF, we're going to go to room 24 now. So room 24, we have two monsters. So yes, two. So we have two monsters here. With a little bit of treasure, if we can beat them. So we've got two dolphins to take care of. But here's the thing. Because we... But the question is, though, the question is, did we surprise him? That's a good question. Did we surprise him? So let's roll d d20, because if that's the case, we get a surprise round. 12, we did. So, the two dolphins probably screeching and echoing a song. Minded their own business, not hearing the noises of the brethren or sisters, whatever, being killed in the north room. They hear the sudden bash as the door is as the door slings right open, and the dolphins are caught unaware, allowing for a surprise round. So, we need to roll. So, I'm going to roll their initiative now. All right, so that's the first portion of the layer. Three dolphins down, and they're about to go into another room. Will the party survive? Who knows? They'll have to tune in next time. Take care.